forward. Now, I simply pull straight back on the introducer and the infusion tube is in place. The sharps in the introducer are now contaminated and they should be protected immediately. Lo locate the sharps plug and place it face up on a level surface. Insert the introducer fully and the sharps are now protected. Locate the clear sharps cap and place it over the end of the device. Twist it into place and the device is now fully secure for transport or disposal. Once the infusion tube has been placed in the patient, it needs to be connected to the fluids that you'll be infusing. Attach the end of the infusion tube to the right angle female connector on the patch. Don't connect the infusion tube directly to IV fluids. The connector tubing is designed to flex and to move, providing strain relief and keeping force off the tube itself. If you want to verify that the tube is correctly placed, you can attach the syringe included in the package to the straight female connector on the patch. Pull back on the syringe and marrow will be withdrawn into the infusion tube, showing that the placement was successful. This is an optional step in the procedure. Once the infusion tube has been attached to the connector tubing, you can attach the straight female connector to the IV fluid source. When we open the clamp, the fluid starts to flow immediately. You may find that the initial flow rate is slow. If this is the case, it may help to do a 10 cc flush with saline. The flush with saline can help clear any blockages and improve the flow rate. Finally, to protect the site, place the protector dome directly over the patch, matching up the Velcro rings. Press down firmly around the periphery of the dome. Putting the dome on keeps the infusion site secure, making sure that fluid flow isn't disrupted. Also be sure to remember to attach the unopened remover package to the patient for later use in the hospital. Slide it into a pocket or you can attach it with an elastic band or tape to the patient. The remover is sterile, so don't breach the package until the device is going to be removed. There are a few precautions for use that users of the FAST-1 should watch out for. The device will be effective in almost all patients, but certain medical conditions may reduce the device's effectiveness and safety. Before applying the device, caregivers should check for the following. Trauma, infection, or burns at the insertion site may interfere with the use of the system. This is because cleaning of the site prior to insertion and proper placement of the patch are essential steps in the safe use of the device. If the skin is damaged, it may be difficult to properly prepare and sterilize the site, and it may be difficult to properly secure the patch, which must be in the correct location for targeting and for holding the installed system in place. It is not recommended that the fast one be used if there is severe skin damage over the infusion site, but the system should be used according to the operator's discretion. The safety of the FAST-1 has not been proven in patients with very severe osteoporosis. Ping does not recommend that the FAST-1 be used on patients with these conditions. Use of the device is dependent upon the operator's judgment. During field testing, the system was used without complication on a 100-year-old. When applying the system, operators should check for midline sternotomy scars. The FAST-1 may be less effective if the patient has had a sternotomy, due to possible anatomical alterations resulting from the surgery. In some patients, the bone may have thickened or there may be excess scar tissue. The midline may be irregular, which will affect proper placement of the device, and marrow may be absent at the insertion site. Use is dependent upon the operator's discretion. Users of the FAST-1 may encounter patients with a suspected sternal fracture, it is important to remember that the FAST-1 system infuses fluids into the manubrium, 
which is a separate bone compartment from the main sternal body. The manubrium is less susceptible to fracture than the main sternal body and adequate fluid flow can be achieved even if the sternum is cracked. Again, the operator should judge whether using the FAST-1 will be beneficial for the patient. The FAST-1 has been designed to accommodate a wide range of body types within the normal range of adult sizes. The infusion tube is designed to release at a preset depth in the adult manubrium and is potentially harmful to very small adults. Operators should use their judgment in determining whether the patient falls within the normal adult size range and whether the system is safe to use on the individual patient. The system has been successfully used on a 14-year-old girl. We believe that we've created a safe, effective, and dependable design. The FAST-1 is a fairly simple system, but there is a possibility certain problems may arise during use of the device. Technical difficulties with the FAST-1 are rare, but when they occur, most of them are easily dealt with. With proper training, you'll be able to identify and correct the most likely problems during application and use of the FAST-1 system. With the FAST-1, correct placement is critical. The patch, when placed correctly, identifies the insertion target site on the sternum. If it's placed incorrectly, the landmarking will be off and the insertion may fail unless the problem is corrected. During rechecking of the patch position prior to insertion, if you find that the patch is out of position by more than one centimeter or more than half an inch, it's a serious problem that needs to be corrected. Often, a movement of the patient's body may have caused the skin over the site to shift, resulting in a misplaced patch. Return the patient to their original position and recheck the patch. It may have returned to the correct position. If the patch has been incorrectly placed by the operator, it needs to be removed. Remove the patch by peeling back on the patch, taking it away from the patient. Place a new one on the patient, being careful to locate the sternal notch with your index finger held perpendicular to the skin. By using proper technique, you should be able to avoid mistakes in placing the patch. The Fast One's flexible infusion tubing is one of the key features of the device. The tubing will bend and move with the skin around the infusion site while the bone portal remains firmly embedded in the marrow. The only drawback to the flexible tubing is that there is a risk of kinking. Kinking is usually caused by some form of twisting during application. Be careful not to twist the infusion tube or the connector while you're placing the system. If kinking is noticed during, while the system is in place, you should first assess whether the kink is preventing adequate fluid flow to the site. To remove kinks from the tube, simply remove the protector dome and manipulate the tubing. If that doesn't work, disconnect the tubing from the connector tube, untwist the tubing and reconnect it the fluid should immediately begin to flow faster. Once the kink has been removed, you can replace the protector dome. Kinking of the infusion tube was a common problem during our field trials, but since then we've switched to a stiffer tube that is far more resistant to kinking. This should now be an infrequent problem. In most FAST-1 insertions, the handle will release from the infusion tube and sink forward with an audible thunk or a popping sound, and you'll be able to feel the release in your hand. This may not always happen. There may be insertions in which the introducer does not seem to release, despite the bone probe needles being fully inserted in the tissue. This is usually caused by excessively thick tissue over the sternum and may infrequently be a result of irregular anatomy or a major misplacement of the device by the operator. If the introducer does not release, do not pull back and re-push. 
simply withdraw the introducer handle. The tube may already be in place in the patient and the release was merely prevented by thick tissue. The system has been successfully used in people weighing up to 400 pounds with overlying tissue thicker than three centimeters or one and a quarter inches. After you have pulled back the introducer handle, use the syringe included in the Fast One package to withdraw marrow into the infusion tube. This will verify that the tube has been successfully placed. If the insertion was a failure, you should reattempt by checking that the target patch is correctly placed and using a new Fast One system. If the second attempt fails, you should seek a different method of vascular access. In certain insertions, the introducer may not release, even when you apply an extreme amount of force. You should never push with a force that causes you to shake or lose control, or with an amount of force that poses a risk to yourself or to the patient. The introducer's failure to release is likely caused by technique error or by abnormal bone hardness. To deal with this problem, make sure that the force you apply is perpendicular and in line with the introducer's axis. If you're pushing the handle laterally as well as vertically, the mechanism will be forced sideways and may not release. It's easy to apply force to the vertical axis of the introducer. Simply ensure that your wrist and elbow are in line with the introducer handle. Users of the fast one should also be aware that there may be certain individuals whose bones are simply too hard to penetrate without an excessive amount of force. Studies and clinical trials have shown that this will be rare, but you may encounter this at some point. If the bone is too hard to penetrate, you should use a different method of vascular access. This ends the main part of the instructional video. We hope that along with your hands-on practice sessions, this will give you the confidence to use the fast one safely and effectively. When the system is in use, the infusion tube will be securely lodged inside the patient's bone. Once the decision has been made to discontinue the infusion, the system should be promptly removed. When you open the Fast One package, you'll find the system is packaged with a sterile remover, specially designed to quickly and easily take the infusion tube out of the patient's body. If the patient is being transported, it's important you remember to attach the unopened remover package to the patient for subsequent removal of the system. The remover is a flexible rod threaded at one end with a knob at the other end for the operator to grip. This simple tool makes it easy to take the infusion tube out. To remove the system from the patient, first we turn off the flow of IV fluids. Then we remove the dome and we disconnect the infusion tube from the connector tube. Hold the infusion tube perpendicular straight out from the skin of the patient. This is important. By keeping the tube straight, you'll allow the remover to slide straight in without catching on the sides of the tube. During the field trials, there were quite a few problems caused by people pushing the remover through the sides of the tubing. Since that stage, Ping has switched to a more durable tubing but you should still be careful to hold the tube straight as you insert the remover. With the tube held straight, the remover will easily slide in. Turn the remover clockwise, threading it in to the matching threads on the inside of the bone portal. Turn it three or four times or until the threads tighten. Next, pull straight back on the remover and the infusion tube will pop out of the patient. Discard the remover in the infusion tube, treating it as a contaminated sharp. Once the tube is out, the patch can then be pulled off. Apply pressure to the small hole left by the infusion tube and treat the wound using aseptic technique. It is possible that you may...